Hi everyone, I'm Howard Grill, and welcome to this week's Photo Thought. Now, those of you who have followed my Photo Thoughts know that <laughs> this is not my usual recording studio, and that's because I'm away at work. But even so, I thought I'd still like to share a Photo Thought with you, even if it's from my motel room. You know, the older we get, the more we change. And likewise, the longer we're in photography, the more our visual aesthetic changes and evolves, and the better our processing abilities get. Let's talk about revisiting our work. As we spend more time practicing the art of photography, our abilities and our visual aesthetics continue to grow and evolve. They improve over time. First, we learn the rules, and then we learn how to break them. First, we learn how to show a viewer the full dynamic range of an image. Then we learn how to limit that dynamic range in order to try to convey a mood to the viewer. First, we show the viewer everything there is in the image, and then we learn how to, how to lead the viewer's eye through the image in the way we want them to see it. You know, this point was driven home about change during my photo buddy Bob Egan's recent weekly Zoom meeting that we have. You see, in the pre-COVID era, we all used to meet and go out and shoot together every weekend. Now we shoot alone, but we meet virtually every weekend in order to show each other our work, to critique and be critiqued, and to discuss new processing techniques. Well, at any rate, at this particularly weekend meeting, Bob said he wanted to show us three versions of the same photograph. Now, usually this would mean three versions that he made of his photograph he took that he processed differently all at the same time. But no, not this time. This time he wanted to show us three versions of the same photograph, but each version was processed several years apart. And his goal each time he did that processing was to try to make the photograph express a very mood and feeling that he had had at the time that he took it. Let's have a look at the photos. Here's the first version of his photograph, if it's fair to call it that. And I say that because it's really his original raw image put through HDR processing back in 2010 when he visited and photographed Mesa Arch in Utah at sunrise. By the way, even though it looks like he was all alone there as an isolated photographer, that's far from the truth. There were actually dozens of photographers there kneeling down in rows with the front row down on the ground and each subsequent row positioned higher than the one before. And so much for truth in photography. It's a nice photo, but it doesn't live up to its full potential yet. Here's his second version, which he processed three years later in 2013, with three years of a change in his aesthetics and ability. He wanted to add drama to it, and there's definitely more mood and feeling in this one compared to the original. Finally, this third version was processed in October of 2020, and I think this is by far the most appealing version of all. There really is a dramatic mood, and the viewer is drawn into the image, which now has much more of a three-dimensional feel to it. I think Bob was very successful at molding it into an image that expresses what it was like to be there as the sun rose in the sky. At the time, of course, he had thought that the 2010 and 2013 versions had expressed that feeling, but we both think that it's really this 2020 version that far and away expresses it the best. And I think that's attributable to growth in the many facets of being an artist in terms of aesthetics, as well as in the technical ability to be able to express what you visualize. I think progression like this is what occurs in all artists over time, even if it's not expressed in the same image as was evident in this example. Well, I think Bob's photographs really demonstrate how our photography can evolve over time and improve, even though at any one point along that timeline, we really feel like we're fairly accomplished photographers. And in terms of revisiting work and changing aesthetic, the same is really true of the photographic greats as well. I mean, Ansel Adams, Edward Weston, if you look at the same exact printer there separated in time by several years, they very often revisited their work, and some of the later prints can look very different than some of the earlier prints of the very same photograph. Bob is really a wonderful guy and an exceptional photographer, and I'd like to really thank him for allowing me to use his photographs during this video. 
Well, I hope you haven't minded watching this episode of Photo Thoughts from a very different location than usual. So what are your thoughts? Are you aware of your growth as a photographer and an artist in terms of both your aesthetic sensibility and technical abilities? Have you gone back and revisited your work in terms of seeing whether you can change your visual expression over time? If you'd like to discuss it, and I hope you will, why not leave a comment below the video and we can talk about it. 